it's MrTruck.com with some more accessory reviews. You know, I got to thinking, everybody's talking about EV trucks and cars. You know, the electric ones, and that's what's coming. Well, you know, trains have been electrically powered for decades. You know, they, it's a diesel generator, runs electric motor, and that's what drives trains. And a lot of those big steamer, not steamer, the big scoopers too, the mines. And I was thinking about all the, the uh, lithium ions that I have, and all my cameras are lithium ion. They've been that way almost, almost 10 years. I mean, it's been probably six, seven years before I ever put a double A battery in a camera. So that's the way of the future. And you know, there's a lot of things to think about. I think about, you know, what are you gonna do when the battery expires? What are you gonna do, you know, later on? And um, my, I had a Fusion, a Ford Fusion that was hybrid. It had big old battery pack and it got 45 miles a gallon. It was fantastic. But uh, it had a seven year warranty on the battery. Like a lot of the new ones have longer battery warranties. And I thought, well, I'll get rid of it for then. I'll worry about it. So that's how I did. And I got rid of it probably when it was six, six years old anyway. But, you know, I, I think they're, these lithiums are so cool. You know, the, the lithium, like what Ford uses, it's liquid cooled. Now you go to the nickel, and a lot of the nickel ones are, they've also got a little bit of cobalt and magnesium in them. And like the ones in the Toyota Tundra, it's air cooled. Well, the ones in the trucks, you know, most everybody else is liquid cooled. And, you know, the more motors, the worse, the heater it gets, which the hotter it gets, which is what a lot of the, the full EVs are, the full electric truck, not the hybrid. I'm kind of a believer in the hybrids. But I was thinking about all the tools I have, the lithium ions. And, you know, people worry about when you're going to run out of lithium. Well, you know, there's a lot of lithium in South Africa and in Australia. Then they ship it to China to refine it. Well, now we've got a few mines in the United States and we're building some factories to, to refine it and make the batteries. So I think we'll be okay. I don't think there's gonna be a big shortage that we all worried about. And I guess, uh, you know, Tesla already thought of all that. You know, now he's Mr. Twitter. But anyhow, you know, the, it's, it's interesting too, the Toyota on the Tundra uses nickel and so does the Ford Lightning with the extended battery. The regular battery, they're lithium ion. Just like every tool I have is lithium ion. And I'll tell you all about that. But you know, um, the I was thinking about most of these two, about all the ones full electric, are like $100,000. You look at the Lightning, you look at the, you know, the uh, Hummer from GM, you look at the Rivian, all those, they're like $100,000 vehicles. Well, for my money, if I was going to spend $100,000 on a truck, it would be a dually crew cab diesel loaded, loaded, loaded. But that's my opinion. Electrics are good, and I really believe in hybrids. Electric, I'm not quite there yet. But I should be because all my tools are electric. And I know a lot of mechanics, and what they do, they, uh, they use either a Snap-on or a Milwaukee which are good, good machines. I've got a Flex, I can show you my Flex, this puppy. And this was 24 volt. It's got a two and a half amp hour battery on this one. And this is, uh, this is 1400 pounds of torque this puppy puts out. It's a hammer drill. I use this on those quick crankers to raise and lower trailer jacks. But yeah, the five amp battery is quite a bit bigger comparably to the two and a half that's on here now. Makes some pretty heavy tools, but this is heavy duty. So I use this a lot, but I have a lot of favorite tools like that. And then I'm gonna show you my the batteries in my trailers. I've got two of them with lithium ion. And the cool thing about them is it's got a lifetime warranty. You know, it gets really cold. They still have a big reserve, but they don't charge when it's like, I don't know what it is, below 10 or one of those temperatures. But, and they're, they're expensive, but you know, there's no maintenance, there's no water, and they're half the weight of a regular uh, lead acid battery for the RV side. So I've, I've done really well with them. I get a big kick out of it, and then I've got a Red Arc charger on there to help amplify the charge from the truck because it's a dump trader, and you dump them, you know, several times a day. You make sure you got enough battery reserve in there. But yeah, the one I've got the Lion Energy is the lithium ion I have in my trailers. And I was going through about a battery every year on some of those trailers. They have a lot of toys, accessories, winches, all that stuff. Hydraulic dumps, hydraulic jacks. And then, you know, so I, I, I got a big kick out of, out of what this Lion, Ener Lion Energy can do. 
In mine, I guess it's the UT1300. I used to figure out the uh, life cycle. So it'll do at least 3,500, you know, starts on a vehicle, whatever you want to call it. And it's rated, it's a 20, it's 12.8 volts, 105 amp hours. And it, uh, they've been really powerful. I really like them. A lot of uh, RV companies are using those and are using those on the overland vans because you can, you know, run all kinds of stuff on, get two of them on there, and you can go without a generator if you set it all up right. So I, I, I thought that was really a, a good idea. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I think the batteries are here to stay. I think they, they won't, we're not going to run out of uh, lithium-ion. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a whole, hopefully they'll figure out a way to recharge these, rebuild them, or refurbish them at some point. But uh, I'm going to show you some of my tools here. I've got another a DeWalt drill. Let me find that for you. And this one is an XR DeWalt. It's got a 5 amp hour, 20 volt, and it's lithium ion, of course. I use that for my my uh, ratchet, my uh, chain binders, you know, they got power ones on there now, and it's so cool. And this is, uh, it's been a good drill. This is 700 working torque, and it goes down to, or well, goes up to 1200 breakaway uh, torque. So, but it's not quite as powerful as that flex is. It's really the thing, but you know, I'm getting old. I'm going to show you too. Of course, this drill, it's powerful, so it comes with this clamp thing, so you can really put that torque out and run the hammer and do all these things. But uh, it's nice to have power, and that's what the batteries do. You know, I've got torque converters too, not torque converters. I have um, impacts. You know, like I was talking about, the, the professional mechanics I know use either Milwaukee or Snap-on, but I've got... Since I don't use a ratchet anymore, <laughs> I use these. This is my DeWalt 3 8 impact. It's a powerful little 3 8 you know, you don't need an impact. So I got that, and then nothing beats Harbor Freight Earthquake. <laughs> I know, I know all the stories. This thing really is a torquey. I don't know the rating on it. It's 20 volt, and it's a 4.0 amp hour, but this thing, I mean, this thing will go all week long. I'm amazed how long this battery lasts. Yeah, Harbor Freight, so it's cheap. But, you know, they have some good stuff and they have some not so good stuff. So you got to pick and choose, but this is a fantastic impact. I take wheels off all day long on trailers and trucks and I hardly ever charge it. I mean, it's just weird. It'll go several days. But those are those. And then I was going to show you some of my other things that I love as far as a, a cordless application this is one of my first cordless drills it's black and decker it's called firestorm you can hope you can see that but this puppy it's getting old enough to where you got to charge it a lot and it's not as powerful as it used to be it's about shot but what was cool about this is see up here in the check you push these buttons and the check comes off and you can put those little tools and screwdriver and stuff right in there so it made it really a quick change if you're going between a driver a screwdriver uh, into wood and uh, run the bit. So you could drill a hole and pull this off and actually screw the bit in with you know, the tools that they come with, the screwdrivers and the torques and all that. So, and it's got two speed. Most of my stuff is two speed. I think the one DeWalt is a three speed, the XR. But this is a cool tool. It just happens to be not wore out. But it's one of my favorite drills, one of my first cordless drills. And, you know, I think uh, Black & Decker owns DeWalt, so you got some connections there, but the DeWalt's their heavy-duty series. But wait, there's more! Let me show you all the rest of my toys. Well, I can't show them all to you. This is my hedge trimmer. 22-inch <laughs> hedge trimmer. I can get it all in the frame. It would be amazing. It uses the same battery as that Black & Decker drill, and this is so nice. In our last place we had, we had hedges all over the place. So it was so nice to be able to take this out there instead of pulling 150 feet of cord behind you, because I have done that with these. And you know, this is so much easier. And I've got a, I've got, a, I'll show you my work uh, weed whacker, and I've also got a work uh, saw, which is really cool, circular saw. But well, watch this.
this is my work. <laughs> I know I can't get this all in the frame. I'll have to show it to you in sections. There's like the handle. It's a 20 volt, four amp hour. And then, you know, of course it's got the, the whip on that side. And it's really easy to work with. And this is one of the best weed whackers. My you know, last one probably had 150 foot of cord, but not now. Now this is the world. This is where we're at. And it's so cool having lithium ion batteries. It made my life a lot easier. And, you know, it's, it's, it's changing. And someday I'll probably will have an electric truck, even though I'm still kind of angling toward hybrid. I'm just hoping to have a heavy duty hybrid, you know, like with a diesel. We'll see if anybody makes a heavy duty one. And I don't know how they're going to do semis because, you know, those things, 80,000 pounds, you're going to have to have a trailer load of batteries. That's all you're going to be able to have in your trailer. But maybe they'll figure that out too. I, I don't know. But, uh, and someday we'll have some of the other stuff that's coming out. But it's good to, to uh, not have to burn the gas all the time, especially with the prices of gas now. Maybe I'll get me a windmill out here. Man, we're right here in the middle of nowhere. We could use a big windmill to give us all of our power. We're wanting to go some solar now. I've got solar on one of my RVs, and I've got a solar charger on some of my trailers. I'm going to get some bigger solar panels for that. But uh, it's the future. You can't fight it. You might as well get on the battery thing and, and have a little more free time and not get tangled up in the, in the, in the wiring on the extension cord. And you know, the worst problem is that stuff gets all tangled up. I mean, my uncle knew how to tie it, do his little crisscross thing, and, and that worked for him. I could have a hell of a time trying to wrap up all my electrical cords. But you know, most of my vehicles now too, they've got 110, 400 amp plug-in. So, you know, you can charge stuff about anywhere. And I do, I actually did a Zoom uh, from my, my brother's graveside. We buried my brother ten, five years older than me last weekend. And I took my computer, plugged it in the back of this Tahoe and we did Zoom, you know, and I did the hotspot off my phone and did it all out the back. So being mobile is so good. I mean, you know, don't be tethered to electrical cord. I, and that worked out well. We did Zoom with 13 people on it off my laptop, plugged into the Tahoe. So, uh, you know, so I'm sure my computer's got a pretty powerful battery. And that's how that goes, too. So we're kind of surrounded by this. I suppose someday it'll rot my brain. I don't know. But right now, I love these lithium-ion batteries. I'm all for it. So, see you at the gas station. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. So please subscribe and tell your friends and then see what you think of this kind of review. This is like a tool review. So you have to let me know if it's interesting to you or not. I do have a couple toolboxes coming for this weekend. I've got one from the fuel box. It goes in the back of the truck and it's all coated with bed liner. It's got a slide out drawer. It's so cool. I'll be reviewing that this weekend. Then I got another thing from Tuffy that goes under the back seat that's a lockable steel cabinet with you know the kind of locks you can do by fingers. So we're gonna be putting those two projects on here. And then I'm coming up with a longer term review of my 150 now. I'll tell you all about the the cam phasers I replaced or <laughs> replaced and, and tell you how it's holding up and all the options we've done to it. It's about three years old now, 60,000 miles. First set of tires went on it. And I'm trying to hold off on brakes as long as I can, but I know the back ones need, need something done to them. So, see you at the gas station where you're charging up your batteries. Don't go away, Mr. Chuck.TV. We'll be right back. <laughs> It's Kent with MrTruck.com, another review, a product review for trucks. And this time it's Roadmaster Active Suspension. Now I've heard about this for years and years and years. A lot of my friends have them, they all bragged about them. But I didn't understand how you can put a half a spring on half of a leaf and how that would work. But now I know <laughs> how it works against the shackle, the hinge of your leaf spring and how that tightens it up and controls the leaf, which is what, so it's kind of like an anti-sway bar. It does a lot of things to control the motion back there. And you don't want a whole lot of motion back there, especially with an empty truck, where you're on a loaded truck, you want to control that, but an empty truck is really squirrely. You need a lot of control there. You just saw the Roadmaster controlling the factory leaf spring. And that's what it does. It controls it and during a wheel hop when the axle's trying to bounce and then go sideways on you. Controls the axle wrap, which is the, the drive shaft, universal joints and the pinion, all 
torquing too much, too much angle because of those leaf springs turn into like a big S. It actually bends the factory leaf springs going through axle wrap and just shows you just how easy it is to install. It's very quick installation. I think I did it in 30 minutes. And then in here it shows, you know, where I installed it. You install it to the eye in the front. The part goes underneath the leaf springs and this part cups back over by the shackle, the hinge.